ほらルフィ今一緒に海賊になる仲間を探してるんだイウアは
he asked with his cheesire like grin as Bakugo's eyes widen in fear as he froze in his seat, you're on thin ice Bakugo one more stunt like that and pray to whatever god you believe in because you better beg that I choose option to got it. Aizawa asked him as Bakugo nodded his head profusely as he looked like a blur to the rest of the class. Good Aizawa grinned before turning his attention to Izumi Yagi, Aizawa said gaining her attention. Yes Aizawa see Sensei Izumi weakly asked him as she had her head down. Keep your pet on a tighter leash next time got it? He asked as he looked at her as she avoided his gaze. Yes sir she said as she nodded her head. Aizawa's gaze finally went toward Momo as he gave her a proud smile. I saw what you did yesterday excellent job yesterday Yeyarazu. It was satisfying seeing him in pain like that I kept watching the video over and over again last night. I even made my ringtone his painful screams he said as if on cue Bakugo's painful screams can be heard as Aizawa picked up his phone. Sorry I need to answer this, it's really important he said as he walk out the door answering his phone as the class just sat there speechless in awkward silence, although Momo was smirking in gratitude. A minute later Aizawa entered the class again now today you'll face a great obstacle he said as they gulp in fear. It's a test isn't it? I knew his cheerful attitude meant he was gonna punish us the class thought dreadfully as they began to sweat profusely. Aizawa smirked seeing their dreaded looks before continuing, and that is he paused for dramatic effect as the class was starting to get anxious choosing your class rep, he finally said as the class face faulted as some of them sighed in relief. A normal school activity, the class thought as they cheered. Now choose a class rep, I don't care how you do it, just do it Aizawa said as he got on his sleeping bag and zipping it all the way up before falling asleep. The class was bursting into excitement and raising their hands, suggesting others to vote for them. Hey, hey, let me be class rep, it'll be fun, Mina said. Choose me. It's going to be manly, Kirishima said. We choose me. I'm perfect for the job, merci, Aoyama said. If I became class rep, the girls will have to wear really short skirts, Minta said as drool came out of his mouth. No, everyone yelled at him, feeling creep out. Shut up. Vote me you extra Bakugo yelled as he somehow managed to get out of muzzle and bandages only to shut up again as Siro taped his mouth shut as muffled screams can be heard as the class nodded a thanks towards Siro who rubbed his head in embarrassment. Everyone let's be reasonable about this Ida said as they all turned their attention toward him while Siro tied up Minta in the ceiling for his suggestion earlier, it seems like he's the real hero today as the class thought simultaneously thanking Siro in their heads. The class rep is a highly important role, we must pick who is suited the best for the position, Ida said as he went up into the front of the class. It's obvious that you just want it for yourself. The whole class said in a deadpan tone as Ida looked down dejectedly. All right, how about this? The highest votes will be elected to be the class rep and the second highest will be the vice rep by voting. We can pick whoever we think is the best suited for the role. Once you're done writing the names of whoever you think is best suited for the position you can drop your votes in this box Momo said as she rolled up her sleeve to make a small box as the class does as she instructed. That's a good idea yayurazu san is that all right to you Aizawa sensei Ida asked their teacher who had woken up from his sleep due to the commotion the class had made. I don't care just pick your class rep already Aizawa mumbled as he glared at the class who gulp in fear before going back to sleep much to the relief of his students. Thank you sensei. Ida yelled with a marvelous bow only for him to shut up as Aizawa glared at him for interrupting his sleep again before zipping up his sleeping bag as the other's sweat dropped at them. After a while, the class had chosen who they were voting for and had put the votes on the box that Momo had made for them as Aizawa announced the results. Momo Yayarazu 7 votes. Izumi Yagi 3 votes. Huh, so I guess I'll be the class representative. Momo muttered a bit shock that she was chosen as the class representative, though she didn't seem happy that Izumi became the vice rep, as she stood in the front of the class with Izumi who's quaking in her boot due to her nervousness and being near Yayarazu. 
who the fuck voted for this ponytail bitch Bakugo shouted as he once again got out of his bandages and muzzle as well as Ciro's tapped he had put on him a while back. Seriously? How is he doing that? Both of his arms are in a cast, there's no way he can move them. The class thought with a shock and annoyed look on their faces. Ida, Mina, Toru, Tsuyu, Jiro, Yuraraka, and Izumi raised their hands as Izumi weakly raised hers next to Momo which surprised them. Better her than you dude, Siro said as the rest snickered. What the hell are you saying you damn extra? Bakugo yelled at him furiously. See? Siro gestured his hand towards the fuming Bakugo to emphasize his point. Yeah I totally agree with this, she would have made a good class rep Kaminari said. You go girl, Mina cheered at her. Yeah you were Manal or Womali the other day that fight was awesome Kirishima said. It's a shame I didn't get the position, but I will do my best to help you, Ida exclaimed as he stood up from his desk. Enough Aizawa said as he glared at them shutting them up it's decided Yairazu will be the class representative while Yagi will be the vice representative he said as he turned to the two. You two will report to me a file containing every single one of your classmates quirks. You got until tomorrow to do it got it, he said as the two nodded their heads in understanding. As Momo was a little miffed that she has to work with Yagi as Izumi looked at her before looking away nervously noticing her glare towards her. Lunchtime. Momo was currently eating with Jiro peacefully as they chatted with each other, but was interrupted when Mina, Ida, Yuraraka, Siro, Kaminari, and Kirishima joined them. Hey yeah Momo, Jiro mind if we seat here? Mina asked her as Momo nodded in confirmation. Mina smiled brightly as she and the others began to seat next to them. Hey, you know I've been wondering something about you Ida can admit it, you're rich aren't you? Yuraraka asked as the other turned to him. Ida stiffened as he stammered an answer I, I well you see Ida said as he recomposed himself slightly adjusting his glasses, the Ida family have been pro-heroes generations he said as they stared at him in awe. Do you guys know the Turbo Pro Hero Ingenium Ida? Asked them as they all nodded in agreement. Well, he's my older brother, he said as he puffed his chest and beamed proudly as the others stared at him in shock. Wow, manly, Kirishima said. No way, Kaminari exclaimed a bit shock. So cool, Mina shouted as she was excited. Why didn't you tell us Ida Sanya Yurazu? Asked him curios. Well I'll admit I thought that once you learned about my family that you will treat me differently he said as he looked down ashamed. Nah you don't have to worry about it. I mean look at Yeomomo she's crazy rich and yet we don't treat her any differently Jiro said as she assured him as everyone nodded in agreement as Ida gave her a grateful smile. They continued to eat as they chatted with each other as the topic eventually went to Momo's election as the class rep. Are you excited to be the class rep Ye Momo? Yuraraka asked her. Yeah, but I didn't expect that it would be me. I thought it would be Ida, she said as she voiced her thoughts. You kidding you're perfect for that role Jiro said to her a bit proud. I agree, although I did not receive the role I can't deny that you would be a better class rep than me. I already accepted my defeat earlier, I will do my best to assist you and Yagi Ida said his hand in a chopping motion. Yeah you killed it girl you already have this leadership aura on you plus. It helped that you managed to beat Bakugo who got first on the entrance exam Mina exclaimed excitedly. Yeah you were awesome during the battle training you kick Bakubro's ass good Kirishima said giving her a thumbs up. Yeah you were a badass during the exercise Siro said. Yeah you were electric the during the battle exercise Kaminari said with a smile as Jiro who was sighting next to him to elbowed him for the lame joke. Momo blushed red at their praised before she recomposed herself, giving them a thankful look thank you. I will do my best as the class representative of class 1A she said with a proud and determined look on her face. Yeah, the others cheered her on as they continued to eat their lunch chatting with each other. Hey, who do you think voted for Yagi? Mina suddenly asked them in curiosity as the others looked at her. Probably Bakugo Gyro and Momo muttered as the others nodded in agreement. Well, I don't know the other two are but apparently Todoroki voted for her Yuraraka said a little annoyed with a small pout on her face which the others didn't notice. Well aside from Mina that is. 
Todoroki voted for her? Kirishima asked a little shock. Yeah, I wonder why. Kaminari asked, wondering the same thing as Kirishima. Mina suddenly looked towards Yuraraka with a smirked and a mischievous look in her eyes. Oh, and how did you know that Yuraraka? Mina asked her as she sung her name with a gleam in her eyes. Yuraraka flushed red as she looked down suddenly interested in her half-finished curry and rice on her plate. Hey, you still haven't answered my question, Yuraraka. Mina snickered as Yuraraka's face flushed even more redder than it was before as the others snickered along with her. Well, he told me. Yuraraka said stuttering as she covered her face with, with her hands in embarrassment as she floated up unconsciously activating her quirk before being caught in Siro's tape bringing her back down to the ground. The others laughed at her while Yuraraka playfully glared at them through her still red face, especially Mina. Momo on the other had had a smile on her face as she was reminded of Izuku because of his heartwarming smile, his stuttering, his kindness and pure innocence, she sighed sadly as she truly missed him. She had a sad smile on her face as she was eating with her classmates as Gyro noticed her mood shift from happy to sad as she was about to ask what was wrong until she was interrupted when a loud alarm went off startling them as the other students began to panic. The teacher's table. The teachers were currently eating their lunches in the teacher's table as they chatted with each other but was interrupted when a loud alarm suddenly went off disturbing them from their lunch. What was that? Cementos asked as he grew concerned. That's the alarm for an intruder alert? Midnight said as her eyes widen. There's an intruder at Yua, present Mike said as he and the others went to check. Let's go we could be under attack, and the students might be in danger ectoplasm said as he and the others went to check what was going on while the others check on the students. Aizawa was about to follow the others as he suddenly got a bad feeling in his gut, telling him that the real danger was somewhere else. Present Mike looked to see Aizawa hasn't moved yet showed a you coming? Present Mike asked him concerned for why his friend hasn't moved to help the others yet. You guys go I'll catch up with you, Aizawa said, as he ran to the teacher's lounge office, leaving present Mike wondering what was wrong before following the others to help calm the students. Aizawa ran as fast as he can towards the teacher's lounge as he slammed the door looking around as he saw a man with a black cloak with a hood that covered his head. He was wearing an orange mask with black markings on them, with only one visible eye hole with red eyes that he swore looked familiar for some reason, although he couldn't look at it properly due to the hood and mask covering most of his head and face. Who the hell are you? Aizawa asked as he looked at the man with his quirked already activated readying his capture scarf to fight. Ah Shota Aizawa A.K. Of the pro hero eraser head truly, it is an honor to meet you, and as for who I am, well who I am is not important right now, Madara said. Aizawa threw his scarf around the man in order to capture him, but was shocked as the attack simply phased right through him like he wasn't even there. What the hell? Is his quirk is it like Tagata's? Is that how he got in here without alerting any one of us? Aizawa thinks as he recovered from his shock quickly getting on guard. Nice try, but it was a futile attempt now that I have what I wanted I can now leave Madara said as Aizawa grew furious. You're not going anywhere, Aizawa yelled as he prepared his scarf once more but Madara threw something at him as he caught the kunai with ease as he heard hissing sound coming form the paper warp around in the kunai as his eyes widened before throwing it away. The kunai exploded with a loud boom followed by a blinding light that temporarily blinded him for a second as Madara disappeared in a swirling vortex. Aizawa looked around after blinking a few times as he adjusted his blurry eyes to the light once more thanks to the flashbang that went off earlier, he looked to where Madara was before seeing. He was now gone nowhere to be seen before he clenched his fist in anger and punching the wall in anger. Damn it! He exclaimed as he let someone get away with who knows what he stole from them. With Momo, everyone was now panicking as the other students ran towards the exits in a rush trampling and hurting many students as they push and shoved each other away. What's going on? Kirishima said as he stood up. Ida grabbed one of the older students and asked what is going on what is the meaning of this? He asked as he looked at the older student. 
that's the alarm for an intruder attack. There's an intruder here at Yua. Probably villains, I don't know this never happened before the older student said as he quickly ran off leaving them shock and speechless. Momo instantly went to leader mode as the others would soon dub it as she ushered every one of her classmates to go to the exits carefully. They were squishing against each other as Momo was shoved to the window by another student as she got a view outside. What she saw was the press had somehow broken into Yue as they were trying to enter school grounds as present Mike and the other teacher were trying to control the situation and keep the press from entering private property. Then a light bulb went in her head as she created a megaphone and looking around to find Ida as she finally found him. Ida san. Ida turned his attention towards her, it's just the press I have a plan here catch. She yelled at him as she tossed the megaphone towards him as he quickly caught it. Uraraka san Uraraka looked towards her use your quirk to make Ida san float up. She instructed her as Uraraka nodded her head in understanding. Hi. She said as she touched Ida's back making him float up as Ida uses his quirk to boost himself toward the front of the crowd before landing awkwardly as he looked like the man from the emergency exit sign. Everyone, Ida yelled gaining their attention please calm down it's just the press just look outside. They all look outside to see that the police had arrived as they quickly saw the press being arrested by the cops for trespassing into. You a property as they all sighed in relief please, I want you all to return to your classrooms in an orderly fashion class reps lead your classmates and make sure that they're safe, he said as they did as what they were instructed. Uraraka released her quirk as Ida slowly floated back down to the ground as the class began to surrounding him and Momo praising them for their quick thinking and good planning. That was cool Ida Mina exclaimed as Ida shook his head. It was all Yayarazu-san's plan, I simply followed her orders, Ida said. Good thinking Yamomo Jiro said as she gave Momo a thumbs up. As expected of the class rep Kirishima said. Indeed your plan was impressive Yayarazu-san Ida exclaimed. Momo smiled at them in gratitude for their praises before saying all right everyone that's enough let's head back to the class before Aizawa sensei gets mad at us, she said as she began to walk back to their class as she ushered everyone to follow her as the gulp in fear before following her back into their classroom. In the classroom, they quickly made it back in class in time to see Aizawa waiting for them in his desk as they quickly took their seat as Aizawa spoke. I heard what happened earlier good job Yayurazu. Ida you handled the situation well Aizawa praised the two for their actions of dissolving the panic that the students were in earlier as Aizawa finished their lesson they were having. As they were about to finish class for today Izumi suddenly raised her hand and stood up. W8E everyone I I wo would L like to M make an announcement she said as everyone looked at her I I would L like to re-resign my P position as vice rep she said much to the shock of the class. What? Why? The class asked her confused and shocked. I I think I don't deserve this position earlier it was Ida-san and Yayurazu-san were the ones who calmed down everyone as I did nothing and thus I don't think I'm right for the position of vice rep, and I think it should be Ida San helping Yayarazu San as the vice rep, so I would like to resign and give the position to Ida San, is that all right Aizawa Sensei? Izumi asked their teacher who shrugged. Sure whatever he said nonchalantly as the class stared at him. Just like that seriously? The class yelled bewildered as it was that easy. Ida stood up from his chair with tears in his eyes as he clenched his fist, I won't let you down, I will do my best, as the vice rep of class wanna from now on thank you for giving me this opportunity. He exclaimed as he bowed and looked towards Izumi and gave her a grateful nod as Izumi nodded in thanks before sitting back down. Well gotta admit he was manly earlier Kirishima said. Hey is it me, or did he look like the emergency exit sign earlier? Kaminari said, earning a few chuckles from the class. Yeah, you'll be a great vice rep, Ida Mina cheered as Ida nodded his head with a smile on his face from the praise and support his classmate are giving him. Sounds good emergency exit Ciro said as the class laughed at that. 
All right, that's enough. It's official. Your class rep is Momo Yayurazu and vice rep is Tenya Aida. Now that's all for today. You all may go home, Aizawa said as he zipped up his sleeping bag and went to cocoon mode as the class packed their things and left. Yua Entrance Gate All the teachers along with the principal was currently looking at the destroyed gate of Yue as they wondered who could have done it, although Aizawa had a sneaking suspicion that it was the intruder earlier or maybe one of his accomplice. How could ordinary members of the press able to bypass our security systems, the principal said, as he looked like a mixture of a mouse, dog and bear wearing a suit someone else must have been behind this, some villain actually managed to infiltrate Yue and use the press as a distraction. But is this purely a show of power or a declaration of a war, the principal wondered as he talked his thoughts out loud for everyone to hear. We will start an investigation. I'll ask Hound Dog to sniff around if he can find any scent. The rest of you will look after the students if the villains decide to attack again this time, bringing a better cavalry, the principal said as the teachers nodded in understanding. Unknown to them, a man with a black hoodie and light blue hair. His hair was covered by his hood as he had red eyes and a chapped lips he as was currently walking away from Yue as he was grinning widely as he did exactly what his master had ordered him to do. He would disintegrate the gates of Yue and letting the press enter the school as a distraction as someone would appear inside of Yue before copying the all the students file and description and the, the location of their next activity into a flash drive. He assumed Kirajiri has successfully completed the mission as he was the only one that he knew that had a warp or teleportation quirk as he made his way back to the bar. Principal's Office Aizawa knocked politely on the door before hearing a come in as he twisted the doorknob and opening the door and going inside to talk to the principal about the incident in the teacher's lounge. Ah, Aizawa-kun, what can I do for you? Nezu asked him as why he visited him. I need to talk to you, something happened in the teacher's lounge when the press got in and caused a panic, Aizawa said as he looked at the chimera. What do you mean, Aizawa-kun? Nezu asked in a worried tone. Someone was inside the lounge, Aizawa stated, as Nezu's eyes widened in shock. What did he look like? Nezu asked him in a serious tone. He had a black cloak with a hood covering his head and an orange mask with black marking on them with one eye hole. But Aizawa said, looking confused. What is it, Aizawa-kun? Nezu urged him to continue. His eyes, Aizawa said, as he hesitated for a bit, I couldn't see it properly due to the hood and mask that he had on, but his eyes looked familiar for some reason like I should know them, but I just can't put my finger on it, Aizawa said as he looked confused. I see. Well, I'll have to investigate about who this masked man is. Everything's going to be okay, Shoda. Just make sure that your students are safe, Nezu said as he reassured him. Aizawa nodded before leaving the room, leaving Nezu to ponder what this could all mean. Somewhere in the city of Musutafu. One more step, and they get it got that a villain said as he held a family hostage. Please help us. Pros, where are the pros? Help, help. Shut up you, the villain said as the family cowered in fear. We see Kamui Woods along with Mount Lady who were trying to defuse a hostage situation from a villain named Habit Headgear as the struggle to take down the villain without injuring the family in the process. Damn it we can't get close Mount Lady gritted her teeth. We need a plan to keep the family away Kamui Woods said as he analyzed the situation. Suddenly a blur was seen and a familiar voice that made the family happy and the villain scared was heard. Missouri Smash all Might yelled as he punched the villain knocking him out cold. Do not fear for I am here. All Might said doing a pose with his signature smile. All Might, All Might save us, look Mama Papa. All Might can I get your autograph? The people began to surround All Might asking him for photos and autographs. Ha 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 of course All Might said as he signed some merch and took some photos before turning his attention to the two heroes. Ah, Kamui Woods, Mount Lady, I assume you had this covered, All Might said as he gestured to the villain who was in handcuffs being put away in a police car. You got it, All Might, Mount Lady said as she gave him a thumbs up before she and Kamui Woods walk up to the cops to make sure everything was all right. 
All Might frowned lately he has noticed that less and less villains had showed up and crime was going down, maybe it was his hero instincts or maybe it was paranoia, but lately he had this sinking feeling that the villains were being organized and was planning for something big and wondering what they could be planning as he thought before shrugging it off and going towards his home. Unknown Location a swirling vortex can be seen as Madara step in into his hideout as he noticed someone waiting for him. The man has short green hair with yellow eyes, his face was both black and white splitting in his face as he had a Venus fly trap over his shoulders as he wore a black cloak with red clouds on them as this is Zetsu Madara's pet Namo. Sup boss Zetsu said. Ah, it's good to see you Zetsu, tell me how have you been adjusting lately Madara asked, as Zetsu had recently got out of his test tube a while back as he was checking if he was okay. We're good Zetsu answered. Good that is good now, I want you to give this to all for one, it contains all of the files of the students along with the next location of their field trip Madara said as he handed Zetsu a flash drive containing the students' names and quirks along with the next location of their field trip. Yes boss Zetsu said said as he quickly sink into the ground disappearing without a trace. Madara smirked behind his mask as he said let the games begin. At a bar. The man with the black hoodie and bluish hair quickly made his way to the bar as he opened the door only to be greeted by a man that looked like purple smoke wearing a suit. Ah, Master Tamura, you have returned. I assumed that the mission was a complete. The mist man asked the newly named Tamura as he smirked. Of course, Kirjiri, did you complete your mission? Tamura asked as he took a sip from his coke. Kirijiri shook his head making Tamura look at him confused. I'm afraid that you're mistaken Master Tamura, it was not me who had entered Yua and stole the files he said as Tamura's widen in shock. What? But who did? Tamura asked confused. I am sorry but I do not know, but I assume that Master must trust him to put him up to this task Kirijiri said as Tamura scoffed before changing the subject. Kirijiri is the Nami ready? He asked as Kirijiri nodded. Yes, young master, it will be ready once we attack you, Kirijiri said as he wiped a glass cup with a towel. Perfect Tamura smirked to himself the heroes will never see it coming. The bar was silent as Tamura Shigaraki and Kirijiri were getting ready to attack the Usji any second now. Kirijiri is everyone ready Shigaraki asked as he looked at Kirijiri. Yes, Master Tamura, everyone is ready to be warp in the Usage Kirijiri said patiently. And the Namu? Shigaraki asked getting annoyed that they were not there yet. Yes, it is ready Kirijiri said as Shigaraki scratched his neck in irritation. Then what the hell are we waiting for? Shigaraki yelled at him as he glared at Kirijiri. Patience Master Tamura, Master has some announcement to make Kirijiri said as he looked at the empty monitor. What he was cut off as suddenly the TV monitor turned on revealing a man with messy grayish white hair and black eyes. You know Kirijiri is correct Tamura you need to learn some patience all for one said as he shook his head. Tamura was gaping at the man as he wondered how his master got his face back. M master why your face h how Tamura asked as he stuttered to get the question out. All for one chuckled, I see that you notice all for one said, as he looked towards Tamura, I recently got it healed, call it a favor from a friend. Shigaraki nodded, although he was still in disbelief. Now Tamura someone will join you in your attack in the Usja. He will be here in a minute all for one said, and as if on cue a swirling vortex opened up and came out a man wearing a black cloak with red clouds on them and a orange spiral mask with one eye hole, he had black messy hair hidden behind his mask. The man landed softly as he looked around before noticing the people in front of him. Hi, I'm Tobai, nice to meet you, Shigi Senpai Tobai said in a childish voice as he waved his hand excitedly in front of them. Shigaraki deadpan before looking at the screen where his master is master, who the fuck is this guy, he asked. Tamura meet your new teammate Tobai, Tobai meet Tamura Shigaraki, your new leader all for one announce as he introduced the two. Yay, Tobai cheered as he pumped out his hands in the air, while Shigaraki looked dumbfounded his mouth slightly hanging open. 
He was the one who retrieved the files for the UST along with the files of the students yesterday all for one said. Yup, Tobai said in a proud tone as he crossed his arms triumphantly. You're kidding, right? Shigaraki asked his master, hoping it was all a big joke. No young Tamira, he is the newest member of the League of Villains, all for one said in confirmation. No fucking way, Shigaraki shouted as he pointed at Tobai, who was innocently preoccupied by a butterfly that somehow made its way to the bar while Tobai was muttering while admiring the creature. I'm not working with an idiot like him, Shigaraki yelled as he looked at Tobai with an annoyed look. Shiggy Senpai is so mean, stop being mean to Tobai. Tobai shouted as he huffed and crossed his arms childishly further irritating Shigaraki even more. I'm not working with a loser like him master this has to be a joke Shigaraki said as he wished this was all an elaborate prank on him or something. Hey, Tobai's not a loser, Tobai's hip yeah Tobai's the hippest person in the world, Tobai said as he shook his hip left and right to emphasize his point. Did he just say hip? Shigaraki asked once again in a deadpan tone. My decision is final Tamira. Tobai will be your new teammate. Now prepare everything and make sure everything is ready for the attack all for one said as his black onyx eyes flashed red with Tomos on them for a second before it quickly disappeared unnoticed by Shigaraki and Kirijiri although Tobai smirked beneath his masks. All for one quickly turned off the TV as his image disappeared on the screen before Shigaraki turned to Tobai in annoyance. You better do your job Shigaraki glowered at Tobai before glaring at him. Yes sir, Tobai said as he saluted him before Shigaraki sighed in annoyance before walking off. Izuku was currently running happily as he looked to where Momo was until he spotted her as Momo sitting peacefully in a bench, he quickly hid something from his back that he was holding something as she looked forward and saw Izuku as she immediately smiled brightly towards him. Momo, he exclaimed as he ran toward her hiding something in his back. Izuku, you seem to be in a happy mood today did something happened. She asked him with a smile and a curious look in her face as Izuku nodded repeatedly with a big bright smile on his face. Cute, she thought with a small blush in her face as she internally gushed at his cuteness. So what happened? She asked as Izuku smiled at her before revealing something from his back. The Book of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Momo's eyes widened in shock as he looked at the cover a Harry Potter book, she asked him in shock. I, I bought tea this one at the store, he said excitedly as he showed her the book. Bought? But why didn't you say something to me? I could have bought one for you if you wanted one or you could have just borrowed mine, she asked him as Izuku only shook his head. I wanted my own, Izuku said as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly a eh, and why you don't have to that be because l I've be been sa saving my mo money for this, he said as Momo smiled at him. And I want to read this with you, he said as he smiled brightly at her making her profusely blushed red again. Is that so? Momo fondly smiled at him while her heart started fluttering as a blush started to appear on her cheeks. Yeah, and we will read this together until the end, he exclaimed excitedly as Momo was now blushing uncontrollably making her look like a tomato. A hey, Momo? Why are you so red? Are you sick? He asked worriedly as he shook Momo's shoulder to wake her up, but it was too late as she had already passed out due to the thought of her and Izuku being together as she had an intense blush on her beautiful face with a happy smile on her face as Izuku was desperately trying to wake her up. Momo wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Mistress Momo wake up breakfast is ready. Her maid knocked on her door as she heard her alarm clock was blaring. Beep beep beep. Momo lazily put a pillow in her head to muffle the sound as her hand reached around to touch her nightstand after finally finding the alarm clock and throwing it to the wall breaking it in the process. She got up as she stretched her body to remove the sleep from her as she rubbed her eyes to get the sleep out as she remembered her dream before smiling fondly as she looked at the picture at her nightstand. It was a picture of her and Izuku reading the Harry Potter book he had bought that day as they laughed at something they read. She smiled sadly before she shook her head and got ready for school. 
she quickly freshened up as she got downstairs and eat her breakfast before going to her limo as her butler drove her off to school. She made it in her class as she quickly sat down as Aizawa entered the classroom not a minute later. All right, you brats, Aizawa said as he looked at them as now one dared say a word as Aizawa smirked, you finally learned how to shut up. Good today's training is gonna be different today we're going to the Asthe, Universal Studios Japan. The class yelled excitedly as the pump their fist into the air in excitement. Shut up Aizawa activated his quirk ass, he glared at them making them quiet down wrong kind of us she we're gonna have special training three teachers to instruct you me, all might and another teacher who will meet us there, we will be keeping tabs on you from now on. Three pro heroes? Is this about the break in that happened yesterday? The class murmured to each other a bit shock. Sensei, what kind of training is this? Siro asked their teacher. This will be a rescue training to be exact this special training. You'll be dealing with natural disasters, earthquakes, shipwreck stuff like that Aizawa announced to his class. Disasters, huh? Sounds like we're in for a big workout, Kaminari said as he raised his eyebrow at Mina. Totally Mina said getting excited. Real hero stuff, real manly, I'm shaking with excitement here, Kirishima said pumping his fist. Finally, I get to show off how good I am in the water caro, Tsuyu said. Guys, I'm not finished yet, Aizawa said in an annoyed tone, what you wear in this exercise is up to you. I know you're excited about your hero costumes, Aizawa said, as he click a button add the wall slid open with their hero cases inside, but keep in mind that you haven't gotten accustomed to them, yet so it may hold your abilities back. This special training is in an off-campus facility, so we will be taking a bus to get there. I'll give you ten minutes to change then head outside and meet me there Aizawa said as he walked outside followed by the students as they grabbed their cases and went to change. Outside The whole class was gathered outside as Ida had a whistle on his mouth as he was trying to instruct them to get in the bus. Ida blew his whistle gaining everyone's attention gather around class, one a using your student numbers form two different line so we can load the bus efficiently Ida said as the image of a bus appeared on top of his head. Ida's kicking it gear as our vice rep huh? That class said in a deadpan tone as Ida continued to blow his whistle. Momo only shook her head as she went to the bus. As they entered the bus Ida instructed them to take their seats in their student number order only to deflate as his sitting plan he had made earlier was now useless as it was a open layout seat. This open layout seat ruined my boarding strategy Ida said as he looked down dejectedly. Ida you need to chill Mina said in amusement as Ida was sitting on the floor dejected drawing circles on the ground. Momo was sitting next to Gyro in her left side and Asui was on her right, while Izumi was in front of them as class chatted with each other and Momo was reading a book to keep herself calm. Yagi-chan, I'm Tsuyu Asui, but you can call me Tsu, and I always speak what it comes to my mind, so you mind if I ask you a question. Asui said bluntly as Izumi was trying to look at her, but Momo was glaring at her and releasing some murderous aura causing Izumi to turn her head away. Izumi weakly nodded with a small smile as she asked what her question was as sure Tsu-san. Yagi-san you and All Might quirks are similar Tsuyu said directly as Izumi stiffened. Not only that, but you have the same blonde hair and blue eyes as All Might are you two related Tsuyu said as Izumi was stammering for an answer. As Todoroki who was looking bored until now perk up when he heard that Yagi and All Might might be related as his brain began to spin wildly as he picked up a notebook and began to write profusely and started muttering about secret love childs to himself as Yuraraka who was sitting next to him looked at him a bit startled and shocked. By that question, the whole class looked towards and waiting for her to answer as Momo who was now sweating bullets and struggled to find an answer. Yeah, but... I have two quirks, remember? The one with the stockpile quirk, and she paused as she looked down sadly as she remembered hurting her brother with that quirk, while Momo glared even more at her for what she did to Izuku with her quirk. And what Yagi-san? Tsuyu asked her confused as why she suddenly stopped and looked down. 
I it's and nothing Izumi said as she waved off her question. It just bad memories that's all she said sadly as Tsuyu nodded in understanding it was her secret and it wasn't her business to poke and prod in it as Momo looked sad as she remembered Izuku before quickly going back to glaring at Izumi. Oh yeah right. Plus All Might doesn't break his bones, and she explained to us from the start that she can't really fully control her quirk, and her draw is broken arms, and All Might's quirk doesn't have that drawback besides a lot of people have blonde hair and blue eyes Kaminari said as everyone looked at him as if he had grown a second head. What the fuck did you eat? Gyro said shock as this wasn't the idiot that she had grown fond of. Well not that she will ever admit it. That's not Kaminari. He's an imposter get him, Siro said sarcastically as he pointed his finger at Denki accusingly while he smirked to himself when he saw Kaminari's annoyed look. Hey, for your information I can be smart, I just choose not to, Kaminari said in an annoyed tone as the others snickered at him. Yeah, Kamibro's right, still I bet it will be cool to have a simple augmenting type of quirk. You could do a lot of flashy stuff with my hardening look super strong and can destroy the bad guys in fight. But it doesn't look all that impressive, Kirishima said as he hardened his arm showing it to the class. Momo shook her head, don't sell yourself short, Kirishima Sen, your quirk is very powerful. You just have to be the shield that protects people and besides being a hero isn't about flashiness. It's about saving lives, Momo said reassuring him. Hey, you're right, thanks class rep, Kirishima said, as he gave her a thumbs up in gratitude. My naval lasers got the perfect combination of panache and strength, Aoyama said. But it's way lame if it gives you a stomach ache, sweetie, Mina said, as Aoyama looked down deflated. If we're talking about flashy quirks, it would be Yagi, Todoroki, and Bakugo they might get popular, Siro said. But Bakugo-chan won't be popular if his manners and personality has to say something about it, Kiro Asui said as she pointed her finger at the fuming Bakugo. What the fuck did you say about me, frog face? Bakugo yelled furiously as he stood up and gripped the railing o' the bus. See? She said as she shrugged it off while Bakugo was fuming with rage. You know we basically just met you, but we already know that your personality is flaming crap mixed with garbage Kaminari said as he shrugged of Bakugo's threats. What did you say? You're gonna wish you were never born you loser. Bakugo furiously yelled at him as Kaminari simply shrugged it off. Same as ever Momo muttered in annoyance as she rolled her eyes at him with a sigh. Enough you brats were here stop messing around Aizawa said breaking their conversation as they got up and walked out of the bus. In front of the Usti. They walk out of the bus as they were in front of a huge building standing in front of the building was a pro hero that looked like an astronaut wearing yellow boots. Ah you must be class one a hero said she wore what looked like a space suit with yellow shoes I've been waiting for you. The class gasp in shock as they instantly recognize the pro hero. It's 13, she's one of my favorite heroes. Yuraka exclaimed in awe with stars in her eyes as she admired one of her favorite heroes as she fangirled. Welcome to the Aschi, the unforeseen simulation joint I can't wait to show you what inside 13 said as she gestured to the Aschi facility behind her. This is going to be awesome the class said in unison. They entered the building as they stared in awe at the sight in front of them as they all stood in the entrance of the Astje as they looked to see a place that looked like it was on fire covered by a red dome with fire design on them. Another one looked like an earthquake had just hit the city and looked like the building got buried in the ground due to a landslide. Another one who looked like it came straight out of an apocalypse movie. Another one looked like a large ocean with a ship in the middle of the water. And another one that looked like a mountain and lastly one that looked like it was constantly raining and was covered by a blue dome with what looked like fish design on them. Holy crap it looks like some kind of amusement park the class said as they admired the inside of the facility. Wow, it's huge, Mina said excitedly with stars in her eyes. Man, I'm hyped, Kaminari said as he pumped his fist. A shipwreck, a landslide, a fire, a windstorm, etc. 
I created this training facility to prepare young heroes to deal with different kinds of disasters 13 said as she gestured to the zones in the USJ I call it the unforeseen simulation joint, but you can call it the US 13 said as the class stared at her in awe. Aizawa suddenly walked forward cutting her off before asking hey shouldn't all might be here by now? He asked her annoyed. 13 raised two fingers and whispering to Aizawa, yet yeah, about that apparently, he did too much hero work on his way to school this morning and used up all of his power his resting in the teacher's lounge. Aizawa scoff of course he would that idiot is the embodiment of irresponsibility, he said as he sighed well, we should be okay with just the two of us clocks ticking we should get started he said as he gestured for 13 continue. Excellent before we begin let me just explain one thing. Well, two things, possibly three or four, five, six, seven. It's increasing? Most of the class thought as they sweat dropped. Listen carefully, I'm sure you're aware that I have a powerful quirk 13 said as she held up her finger, it's called black hole, I can use it to suck up anything and turn it into dust. Yeah, you've used black hole to save people from all kinds of disasters, before haven't you, Yuraka said as she fangirled in front of her idol. That true, but my quirk can also be used very easily to kill 13 said, as the class gasp and shock some of you also have powers that can be dangerous. In our superhuman society all quirks are certified and regulated, so we can often overlook how unsafe they can actually be please don't forget that if you lose focus or the wrong move your powers can be deadly, even if you're trying to do something. Virtuous to rescue someone thanks to Aizawa's fitness test, you have a solid idea of you quirk's potential, and because of All Might's battle training you likely experience how dangerous your powers can be if use against other people this class. We'll show you a whole new perspective. You will learn how to utilize to use your quirks to save lives, your power are not meant to inflict harm. 13 explained. Momo, on the other hand, was clenching her fist as she glared at Izumi and Bakugo with hatred in her eyes, as she was lost in her own thoughts again your quirk is for saving lives. Powers are not meant to inflict harm. How about the people who were born quirkless? Because of that the powerful ones mistreat them by using their own quirk. She gritted her teeth as she clenched her fist in anger. I hope you leave here today with the understanding that you're meant to help people that's all I have to say thank you for so much for listening 13 said as she did a little bow as the class cheered and applauded her for her speech. Izumi looked down at the ground while reflecting to herself with teary eyes as she was clenching her fist as she thought about her brother. Onii-chan, Onii-chan, I have a question. Little Izumi asked her big brother, who's writing something on his paper with crayons in their living room. Ah, Imoto, sure what is it? Little Izuku exclaimed as he looked at Izumi who was beaming at him. Why do you want to be a hero? She asked him happily. Izuku pondered about it for a minute before his face instantly lit up and patted her head. I want to be a hero just like All Might. I want to save people with a smile on my face just like him. Whoa. That's cool Onii-chan Izumi said with stars in her eyes. I know right he's so cool Izuku said as he beamed at her. So we will be a hero together right Onii-chan? Izumi asked him. Yeah, of course we're gonna be heroes, we're gonna be because we were meant to save people Izuku said as he gave her his one million watt smile. They suddenly heard a voice Izuku, Izumi you guys hungry? I've baked some cookies? A woman with black hair and black eyes suddenly appeared in the living room as she had an apron on and a tray of cookies on her hands. Izuku and Izumi beamed at each other before running off to the woman. Mommy, mommy, we want cookies, they said as they surrounded their mother to get their tiny hands on the cookies. The woman laughed before setting the tray on the living room table. Careful you two it's still hot, she warned them her motherly instincts kicking in. We will they said in unison before carefully grabbing a cookie and put it in their mouth and began eating it happily. You're meant to help people? She quickie wipes the tears on her eyes and looked up with her eyes burning with determination. Yeah, I'll be a hero Onii-chan, I'll do it for you. She thought as she clenched her fist in determination. All right now that's over with let's got this started Aizawa said as he got up from the corner he was leaning on. 
suddenly electricity started appearing on the light bulbs. As the lights were cut off causing the facility to turn dark, Aizawa looked over to his shoulders as he suddenly got an overwhelming feeling of dread overcome him. Suddenly, a dark purple mist began to appear in the central plaza as a hand can be seen coming out of it. As he head with light blue hair with hands on his face and head as a eye can be seen picking through the portal. Aizawa eyes widen as he instructed the students to stay together, all of you stay together, and don't move he said as he got ready for an attack 13 protect the students. Aizawa yelled to her as the class immediately began to panic. Kirishima looked to where the central plaza was to see a purple portal as people started coming out of it. Oh whoa, what is that thing Kirishima asked as he looked at Aizawa confused and worried. Suddenly a man wearing a black long sleeve shirt and matching pants came out of the portal his body was covered in hands as he had a hand on his face to cover up his face he had light blue hair and red piercing eyes. Next to him a man that's wearing a black cloak with red clouds on them appeared, he had an orange spiral mask with one eye hole, he had black messy hair covered behind by his mast along with a muscular dark purple bird creature with its brain exposed. Eventually more and more villains start to come out of the portal surrounding the whole central plaza by their numbers. The orange spiral masked man looked towards class one before his eyes landed on the two person he despised the most, as he glared at them as he unconsciously activated his eyes turning them red with tomos on them. His gaze then went towards a black hair and onyx-eyed girl, her hair tied in a spiky ponytail behind her, his gaze softened as he looked at her a bit before shaking the feeling off and going back to the situation they were in. Wait, did the training start it already? I thought we were rescuing people? Kaminari asked confused. All of you stay back. Aizawa glared at the warning them not to get closer as Aizawa put on his goggles and preparing his scarf. This is real those are real villains, he said as the class gasped in shock. The only real heroes I see are Thirteen and Eraserhead the purple mist villain said perplexing according to the schedule Tobai retrieve from Yua All Might should be here. Oh, I can't wait to play with them. Can I? Can I? Please, Shigi Senpai Tobai said as he looked at Shigaraki with his puppy dog eyes. Please knock yourself out. Literally, Shigaraki said, getting annoyed. Aizawa eyes widen at that, so it was them who had stolen those files, he thought as he gritted his teeth. Where is he? Shigaraki said as he scratched his neck in irritation. Where is All Might I went to so much trouble of bringing so many friends of mine who were so eager to meet him, they want All Might the great symbol of peace, and I can't believe he's not here, MHM maybe if I kill some brats, then he'll come out and play Shigaraki said as a sadistic smirk appeared behind his hand like mask. The class looked on in horror as the realization finally kick in this is not an exercise anymore, those aren't fake villains they were real, and their lives are truly in danger. What real villains no way, Ciro said in shock, how can so many villains made it to a UA facility this secure? Yeah 13 why aren't the alarms going off Yuraka asked worriedly. Good question 13 said I'm not sure she said making them gasp. Is the entire campus under attack, or is this their only target Momo said either way if the alarm sensors aren't triggered then something is jamming the signals, they careful chose this facility as an entry point at a time where a class was being thought they're idiots for trespassing here, but they've thought this out whatever they're planning they must have a concrete objective in mind, but the question is, what is it? Momo explained to them as they gasp in shock. Good observation as always class rep Aizawa said before turning his attention towards 1313 get them out of here and alert the main campus. Actually if they got the ability to block our sensors then they might be jamming our regular communications too. Kaminari Aizawa called out as he turned his attention towards him try using your quirk to contact the school he said as Kaminari nodded. Yes, Sensei Kaminari said as he put his hand on his earpiece, I can't someone's blocking it. Shit, I have no choice, Aizawa said as his scarf began to levitate and his goggles lit up red from the inside. What are you gonna do? You can't fight them on your own, Izumi said in a worried tone there to many of them. Even if they can nullify their quirks, your fighting style is not suited for this. Your power works best in stealth and one-on-one -on -one fights. 
Aizawa turned his attention towards her. You can't be a pro if you only have one trick Yagi, he said as he looked at 13. I'll leave it to you to protect the students 13, he said as 13 nods in agreement. Aizawa jumped toward the crowd of villains, his quirk activated, and his scarf levitating off him. Shooting squad, a finger gun villain said, take your aim, he said as the other followed his instruction and began to fire at him only for Aizawa to activate his quirk nullifying their quirks in the process. Huh my quirk? What the hell's happening? What's going on? Damn it. Aizawa suddenly warps his scarf around them tossing them into the air before slamming them hard on the ground. The villains gasp in shock as they recognize the pro with the yellow goggles and scarf. Hey, that's Eraser Head. A pro he can nullify your quirks just be looking at you, the villain explained to the others. An erasing quirk, huh? Bet you can't erase a mutation quirk like mine, a four-armed rock villain said as he rushed at Aizawa only for Aizawa to spin kick him and grabbing him by his scarf mid-air and tossing him to the other villains. But a villain like you is only dangerous if you reach me, Aizawa said, as he dodged a punch to his head before kicking the villain and throwing him away with the others. But I've taken measures to make sure that's never going to happen now, who's one of you gutter punks is next. The villains began to surround Aizawa as he fought them off one by one like a pro punching, kicking and throwing his scarf around left and right as the villains were starting to get overwhelmed by him. In the entrance the student were running toward the entrance of the facility as Momo ushered them to move forward. The students were about to make it through the entrance when the purple mist villain suddenly appeared in front of them. There is no escape, the mist villain said it is a pleasure to meet you, we are the League of Villains, I know it's impolite, but we decided to invite ourselves into this haven of justice to say hello to the future generation of pros, and besides isn't this a fitting place for all might the symbol of peace to take his last breath here, and yet I see no sign of him, there must be some kind of change of plan that we cannot have foreseen. Ah well in the end, I suppose it doesn't matter, I still have a role to play the villain said, as he spread the mist around him as Thirteen opened her finger to use her quirk, but was interrupted by Bakugo and Kirishima. Die you fucking extra, I'll fuck you up, Bakugo said. Take this Kirishima said as he raised his fist. Wait, don't. Thirteen said to try and stop them, but they simply ignore her as they rushed at him creating a large explosion in the process. Did you really think that we're just gonna stand around and let you tear this place to shreds? Kirishima asked him rhetorically. Smoke began to clear as the sea the mist villain unharmed mush to their shock. I see that you live up to your school's reputation, but you should be more careful children otherwise someone might get hurt, he said as a metal neck bracer appeared on his neck. You two get out of the way right now, Thirteen said to the two as she had her fingers pointed at the villain ready to activate it. I'll scatter you across this facility to meet my comrades and your deaths suddenly multiple dark purple tendrils began come out of he missed villain and began to surround the students. Crap what the heck is this? Kirishima muttered as he gritted his teeth. Suddenly Ida used his quirk to grab some of his classmates successfully getting out of the mist villain's grasp as they look in horror at the dark purple mist that's surrounding their friends. Suddenly, the same dark purple portal appeared all over the us as a drop of the students. Conflagration Zone Ojiro landed in the configuration room as he looked around to see the building on fire and villains surrounding him. Well, 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 what do we have here? Boys? The villain laughed as the others followed him. Ojiro readied himself as he smirked to them, his tail waging wildly behind him. Bring it on. Ruin Zone Bakugo and Kirishima landed on the ruined zone as the villains were already waiting to ambush them. GRRR you extra, you wanna die, Bakugo yelled as he started taking down villains left and right Kirishima following behind him. Downpour Zone Takoyami and Koda landed on the downpour zone as they looked around to find if any of their friends had been warp along with them. Landslide Zone Todoroki landed into the ground as he groaned in pain as something landed on his back. Ah, a familiar feminine voice was heard as he felt two big pillows landing softly on his back, making him blush when he realized what they were. T. Todoroki-kun. 
Yuraraka yelled as she got off his back with a deep blush on her face. Ah, Yuraraka, he groaned as he rubbed his back. I'm so sorry, she stuttered out as she bowed to him, his face still red. It's fine, he said with a slight blush as he was looking away from her realizing what those soft plump pillows were earlier. Oh, what do we have here? A villain said as he and his friends appeared out of nowhere. Hey, look a girl, we can have some fun with her once we kill that guy. Another villain said as pointed at Todoroki with a smirk on his face. Yuraraka hide behind Todoroki scared as she was looking at the villains who had lust looks on their faces while licking their lips greedily, Todoroki seeing her scared face and went forward to protect her like a knight and shinning armor. Don't worry, they'll never touch you as long as I'm here, Todoroki said as the put his hand in front of her protectively as Yuraraka was blushing madly at her knight, unknowingly getting Toru excited as her ship was sailing. Damn it, Yuraraka, you lucky bastard. Toru thought, oh, she was differently gonna Mina about this later on. Huh? You think you can beat us, you punk? The villain said as he activated his quirk. PSSH, don't make us laugh, you brat. Hey, the sooner we beat this guy, the sooner we can have fun with her. Todoroki glared at them as his right arm began to get cold as smoke was coming from it. Well then, let's get this over with, shall we? Todoroki said as he narrowed his eyes at them. At the mountain zone. Ouch! Kaminari yelled as he, Gyro and Momo fell to the ground in the mountain zone with Gyro on top of him. Their faces were centimeters away from each other, their noses was almost touching each other, they immediately blushed red and their eyes widened as they stayed there for a minute they eyes meeting each other until someone ruined the moment with a cough much to their annoyance. So are you gonna kiss or what? Momo smirked as she rolled her eyes while holding her laugh. Gyro and Kaminari immediately got off each other with a huge blush on their faces as they looked away from each other embarrassed. Ujiro-san is red, I wonder what does it mean? Momo teased them as she leaned into Gyro's shoulder while she was rubbing her chin mischievously. Shut up ye Momo, Gyro said in annoyance her face still red as she playfully glared at her while she covered her face with her hands. Now not the time ye Yurazu. we're under attack here, Kaminari said as he blushed red as he changed the subject while tying not to look at Gyro while Momo sighed. Aren't you scared? Gyro asked her as she looked at Momo, who oddly had a calm look in her face. No, I've dealt worse than this, Momo said in a sad voice as Gyro nodded in understanding, while Kaminari looked at them confused not knowing what they were talking about. Arara, what do we have here? A villain asked as he looked at them. Oi, look at those gorgeous girls over there, we'll have some fun with them, another villain said licking their lips. Oh my! Another perverts. Momo muttered as she created a bow staff before smirking sadistically good. Hey, yeah, Momo, mind making me a sword? I'm gonna beat the shit out of them. Gyro said as she activated her eyes glaring at the thugs. Momo nodded and held up her arm as a sword came out as Gyro gratefully took it nodding a thanks to her. Oh, you guys are fuck, Kaminari said as he winced remembering what happened to Bakugo and Maita. Yeah, he did not want to get in their bad side, he thought as a shiver crawled up his spine. Huh? What do you mean, ya brat? The villain said, confused. Yeah, you guys are dead, we have a pervert in our class, and he tried to peek on them, changing only for her to stab his eye with a really tiny but sharp needle. Then we have an asshole in our class that she beat until he was bleeding on the floor in a pool of his blood half dead mind you that same asshole got first in the entrance exam he said as he gulped in fear, not for him but for them knowing what was going to happen when you pissed off Yayurazu what was the saying again? Never poke a sleeping dragon. Yes something like that he thought as he looked at Momo and Gyro's eyes who were burning with anger. The villains felt the intensity of the murderous aura the girls were giving off as they looked to see Momo and Gyro had a sinister smile on their faces with their weapons on their hands. The villains gulp in fear as they realized that they were not the hunter in this game. No, they were the prey. The Flood Zone Izumi fell out of the portal as she landed on the water on the flood zone. She tried to swim up when she saw a villain about to attack her with his shark-like teeth 
waiting to eat her whole only for him to be kicked away from her by Tsuyu who rescued her in a the nick of time. Hey Yagi San Tsuyu said as she extended her tongue to warp around her waist as Tsuyu swam up dragging Izumi with her. Tsuyu emerged from the water as her tongue gently laid Izumi into the boat, as Izumi coughed up some water Tsuyu had Mainta in her arms as he was slowly trying to wake up. Wow you got some pretty big boobs Tsu MHM Mainta said as he snuggled closer into her breast as Tsuyu was trying to drown him for his comment before dropping him hard on the floor on the boat Tsuyu climbed up to the sides of the boat thanks to his quirk. You saved my life Asui-san thank you Izumi said as she bowed her head in gratitude. I said to call me Tsu Asui said as she gripped the railings on the boat and hop in the boat, this is turning out to be a terrible day of class Asui said in a sad tone. Yeah I've been thinking about what that villain said Izumi said as she took her hand on her chin in a thinking pose they knew our whole schedule. And who will be here they must have gotten into school files when we were stuck in the cafeteria, the teachers were too busy trying to get the media off school ground that means that they've been waiting the perfect time to attack just like Yayuroso san said they were. Minta suddenly butted in hey hold on a second, it's not like this guys can really kill all might when he shows up he'll pound these villains until there's nothing left Minta said as he made punching motions with his fist. Think about it, though Tsuyu said if the villains spend so much time planning this attack, then they probably figured out a way to kill him otherwise, we might not survive long enough to see All Might again. And even if he those show up who knows if he'll make it out alive Tsuyu said as Minta began to panic and began to sweat uncontrollably. No the pros are gonna save us right? Yagi tell Asui to shut up Minta said tears began to come out of his eyes. Suddenly villains started to come out of the water as they began to surround the boat. Finally fresh meat one villain said. Sorry brats nothing personal another one said. Asui san may be right if they're here for dad then they might have a way to beat him they wouldn't have planned this attack if they didn't did they find out about dad's injury Izumi thought worriedly no I can't give up yet I still have to be a hero for him I'll just have to face this evil head on. Guys we need to work together and keep All Might safe Izumi looked at them as she had a look of seriousness on her face. No one at UN knows what's happening do this is up to us. Let's be heroes she said in a determined tone. If they're somehow able to kill All Might and you think we can take them, are you insane Yagi? Did you hit your head when we got here? Minta said as he was bawling his eyes out in fear as he panicked around the boat, the best plan is just to wait for a real pro from Yua to come and save us, he said as he started whimpering. Think about it Izumi said as she looked towards the villains analyzing the situation, those villains down there clearly have the, the advantage in the water and assume that's where we'll fight them she said. Are you even listening? Minta yelled at her. If that's the case they must have known what was inside the usch before they warp us Tsuyu said agreeing with Izumi. Yeah but for a group with such careful, there's one that really sticks out to me, something that doesn't add up Izumi said looking as Tsuyu they sent you here a quirk that's good at swiming, they warp you to the shipwreck zone. It kinda fell together on you didn't it? Tsuyu asked her. Yeah a little bit Izumi said rubbing the back of her head sheepishly. Why does it matter that she say here Minta shouted at them? It means that the villains probably have no idea what our quirks are Izumi said shocking them both. Tsuyu blink in surprise you got a point Kiro she said as she looked at the villains below them if they knew I had a frog quirk they would have sent me to the fire zone over there isn't eat of somewhere full of water. They probably separated us because they didn't know what we could do and plan to overpower us once we're in a smaller groups, easier to pick us off one by one Izumi said her mind already creating a plan, but we can use that to our advantage they didn't know what our quirks are so for all they know the three of us could be super powerful. Izumi pointed to the villains in the water who were just staying there not doing anything look none of them are trying to climb into the boat, they're a little unsure about what our quirks are. But that means they're not going to attack and underestimate us either. For now. Okay, let's talk about quirks Kiro Tsuyu said gaining their attention. I'll go first if you want. Obviously, I can jump really high and climb pretty much any wall. And of course my tongue, which I can stick out about 20 meters Tsuyu said. And the gained a gross out look. And I can spit out my stomach so I can clean it. 
that's not really useful. Finally, I can secrete a toxic in mucus. It just stings a bit. We could probably only use my jumping. And my tongue here forget about the last thing she said. Izumi eyes widen in amazement. Wow, I thought you were powerful. But that's amazing. I have my super strength HUD. It comes at a price, Izumi said, as she held up her fist. Once I use it at full power, I'm pretty much out off commission. It's a double-edged sword. I can control the percentage, but my limit is just about 10%. Mine to pop off his balls on his head and turn to them. I've got these sticky balls, mine to said, as he stick the ball on the wall. Their strength varies depending on how I'm feeling. They might stick to something in a whole day. The grow pack as fast as I can pull them off. But I'll bleed I, I use to many O, oh, and they don't stick to me. I just bounce right off them. Mine to then turn to Izumi. Hey, wait, didn't you say that you had two quirks? Mieta asked her curios as why didn't she mention her other quirk earlier? Izumi suddenly got quiet as she looked down to the ground. I, um, I don't think it will be a good idea to use my other quirk. I could seriously hurt the both of you, she said as she looked down with tears in her eyes as she remembered hurting her brother with that quirk. Minta was about to ask her why when Tsuyu stopped him by wrapping her hand around his mouth. We understand, Yagi, it's none of our businessist Tsuyu said trying to comfort her gaining a nod from the girl. Suddenly a hand mad out of eater slam into the boat rocking it in the process as the students struggle to stay on the boat holding into the railings as the villains were starting to get impatient. Let's get this show on the road, the villain said. Finally another one said. The ship's sinking, we need a plan now, Tsuyu said as she hold on to the wall with her quirk. Minta suddenly ran forward as he threw his sticky balls at the villains with tears in his eyes. The villains avoided the purple balls on the water weight, they're afraid to touch them Izumi thought, as she noticed this her mind already racking in for a plan. The villains watch as the boat was slowly sinking into the water, the boat will fully submerge within less than a minute, and once they're in the water they don't stand a chance against us the villain said as s evil smirk cross his face. Minta suddenly started to panic once again, as he started to back away as he hit his back on the wall were dead. We're fish food, he said with tears on his eyes. So Minta, are you really sure that hero thing is right for you? Tsuyu asked him as she watched start to panic. Are saying that I shouldn't be scared right now? We just got out of the general eye a little while ago. I didn't think I'd be facing death a few days after starting Yua, Minta said as he was now crying tears. An enemy certain of their victory is bound to make a mistake, Izumi said, as she finally came up with a plan now's our chance. We can beat them, Izumi said, as she clenched her fist tightly. He he poor them bet, they're crying for their mommy right now, a villain said, as he laughed. Hey now don't forget Shigaraki told us to keep our guards up, we can't judge them by how old they are, but by their quirks they could do anything the villain scolds him. Izumi suddenly jump off the boat as she used 20% of one for all on her fingers, I have to go beyond my limit 20% will do take this Delaware smash. She said as she flick her finger with one for all as she large whirlpool on the water sucking the villains in it. You ready Minta? Tsuyu said as she had Minta in her arms ready to jump. Tsu, Minta now. She called out to them as Tsuyu jump up with Minta in her arms, as Tsuyu extended her tongue and wrap it around Izumi's waist pulling her towards them Minta suddenly started throwing his sticky balls on the villains, making them stuck in place as blood was leaking from his head profusely. They slowly started falling as they widened their eyes, as the whirlpool was still sucking up villains' hay, if we fall we're gonna get caught up in the whirlpool too Kiro Tsuyu said, as they were slowly falling into the whirlpool. Izumi mustered the rest of her strength as she clenched her fist and yelled detriot smash, propelling them forward away from the shipwreck zone and towards the mountain zone. Crap I used too much power. Guys hold on we're going to crash. Izumi said as the others followed her instruction and bracing themselves for the crash. In the landslide zone. The villains all stood there frozen from their neck down preventing them from moving their bodies as the landslide zone was now covered in ice. Shit W who the hell is this guy? The villains yelled as he was shivering due to the cold ice that gulfed his body. I do don't know but T this is cold. Another one said as Tataroki went towards them with a murderous aura surrounding him. 
Who the hell are you? What are you up to? Todoroki said coldly as he stared at them with icy cold glare as the villains gulp in fear. No response. I'll ask you again. What are you up to? He said while grabbing the villain by his collar. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just don't hurt me. The villain said in fear that Guy's name is Tamura Shigaraki. He wants to destroy All Might. The students widened their eyes as Todoroki let him go and went towards Uraraka. Are you okay? He asked her worriedly. Yeah, thanks for saving me again. That was so cool, she said as she beamed at him causing him to blush before looking away. No problem, he stuttered his face still red. When's the wedding? Toru suddenly asked as she startled the two of them interrupting their moment. Huh? Yuraraka stuttered her face suddenly gaining a red tint as she looked around and saw nothing. Ah, huh? Hegekure, is that you? Todoroki said as he recognized he bubbly voice. Where did you come from? Yuraraka asked shock that she had been with them the whole time. Of course it's me. Who else would it be? Didn't you guys know that I was here? She exclaimed shock. Um, yeah, because your quirk is invisibility, remember? Todoroki said bluntly making Toru pout at him in annoyance. HMPH, Toru said with a pout on her face. Guys, let's go and regroup with the class. They might need help fending off the villains, Todoroki said as the girls nodded in agreement. With Aizawa. Aizawa was currently fending off the villains left and right as Shigaraki was getting annoyed that his pawns were being thrown around like nothing. Hey, Shigi Senpai mind if I play with him for a bit? Tobai said excitedly as he looked at Shigaraki for confirmation. Go ahead at least do something useful Shigaraki said annoyed. Yay Tobai said before rushing of to fight Aizawa. Aizawa kick another villain away as he looked at the orange swirled masked man in front of him. And who are you supposed to be? Aizawa asked as he activated his quirk after blinking for a bit. Ah, oh, come on, Shota, don't tell me that you don't recognize me. Tobai said, dropping his childish attitude as his voice becoming serious. Aizawa eyes widen as he recognized the voice it's you. You were the one in the teacher's lounge yesterday, he said as he gritted his teeth. Aizawa looked at him as he looked at his eyes closely. He finally recognized them as his eyes widen in shock. The sharing in, but how? Azawa thought in shock as an image of a certain dojistu his ancestors have flashed in his mind as he stared at it in disbelief. Tobai smirked behind his mask. Ah, I see you recognized my eyes, Tobai said with amusement in his voice. W, who the hell are you? Aizawa said with a hint of fear in his voice. Who am I? Well, I am Madara Uchiha Tobai said as Aizawa's eyes widened in fear as he recognized the name. And no, that's impossible, Madara Uchiha is long dead, Aizawa said as he gritted his teeth. We lived in a quirked society, Aizawa Khan, do you really think that immortality is that far fetched? Tobai asked him rhetorically as Aizawa glared at him with his quirk activated. Ah, your infamous erasure quirk, a mutation of my own dejutsu. Although far weaker and inferior, Tobai said, now I have to go and visit your students, although let the others have some fun. Aizawa had enough and threw his scarf at him, you're not going anywhere. He yelled out in anger and rushed towards him before the Namu punched Tobai in the head as it just phased right through him hitting Aizawa instead sending him flying. Have some fun, bye, bye, Tobai said going back into his childish voice as he disappeared in a swirling vortex. In the Ush Gentrance the rest of the class that weren't teleported was desperately trying to contact their missing comrades as Shoji had his quirk activated looking for any signal of their friends. Shoji, you got anything? Where is everyone? Ida asked as he looked at the duply armed quirk user for some answers. They've been scattered across the facility, but our classmates are still here, he said as the others sighed in relief. What do we do? This guy is not affected by physical attacks and he can apparently teleport stuff. Siro asked as he looked towards the mist villain who was still in front of them. 
13 turned her attention towards Ida Vice Rep go to the school and tell the faculty what's going on here the alarms aren't sounding and our phones and radios have no signal so it's useless right now one of these villain must be jamming the signals somehow even though eraser head is cancelling people's quirks left and right we're still completely sealed off from the outside world likely whoever is causing this interference his as soon as they warp into the us G, they could be anywhere impossible to hunt down it will be faster for you to run and get help than for us to find whoever is jamming everything 13 said. Yes, but it would be disgraceful for me to leave you all behind, Ida said in protest. Sato suddenly walk forward no emergency exit. There are a lot of alarms outside that's why they're keeping all of us trapped inside the Usti right he said as he took a fighting stance zero following behind him. As long as you can get outside there they won't follow. Blow this stupid mist away with those quirks of yours Ciro said as he readied his elbows. Use your quirk to save others be a real hero 13 said as Shoji walked forward. Don't worry vice rep will help you Shoji said as he stood in front with Ciro and Sato you need to do it vice rep it's the only way. Ida suddenly narrowed his eyes as he took a running pose aiming at the gate behind the mist villain his quirk activated. Even if this is your only option are you really foolish enough to strategize in front of your enemy? The mist villain said as he shot dark purple tendrils towards them. I it won't matter if you know what we're planning or not. Thirteen said as she activated her quirk sucking up he missed around them, I am done standing around, black hole. Ah, uh, a quirk that sucks up matter and turns it into dust, such an outstanding power, however you're a rescue hero 13 skilled at saving people from disasters consequently, that means that you have little fighting experience or battlefield awareness, the mist villain said as a portal opened up behind 13, making her use her own quirk against herself as the students watch in horror as her quirk destroyed the back of her hero costume. How unfortunate that you've turned yourself into dust. The villain said as the student watched helplessly as their teacher was slowly being killed by her own quirk. I, I'm sorry he got me 13 said weakly as she started to fall down to the ground, the back of her hero costume was completely destroyed. 13. Mina yelled as the other looked at their teacher worriedly. Ida you need to get out of here Sato yelled at him, snapping him from his shock go now. Ida gritted his teeth as his quirk began to activate as he ran as fast as he can. You have tried to escape from me before. I won't let it, the mist villain said as he turned his attention towards Ida as a portal opened in front of him as he gasped in shock. Once the other heroes arrive it will, it will be harder for us to put an end to all might the mist villain said as Ida came to a halt in the nick of time. This responsibility was instructed to me, classmates I'll keep you safe, Ida thought as his eyes flared in determination before Shoji grabbed the villain from behinds, distracting him allowing Ida to continue run. I've got him Shoji said as he gritted his teeth tightening his hold on the villain to make sure that he doesn't escape. Ada ran forward as the mist villain escaped from Shoji's grasp and turned his attention towards him you impermeant child. The villain said as he shot forward, you won't set foot outside those doors, I have no time for this, he said as mist began to surround Ida. Not so fast Ciro yelled as he used his tape to wrap it around the mist villain's metal neck piece as Sato grabbed the tape from Ciro's elbow and yanked the villain hard away from Ida as Ida prying the gates open as he ran towards Yua his engine bursting with speed propelling him faster. The Mountain Zone Momo and Gyro was currently fighting off the villains one by one, Gyro with her sword and eyes as she constantly dodge attack after attack from the villains before Thy can even hit her due to her 360 vision granted to her by her Byakugan. Momo on the other head did not hold back as she was beating villain after villain showing no mercy as she was taking them all down left and right with her bow staff. Kaminari just shivered at the ruthlessness the two were displaying their enemies as he looked around to see the unconscious bodies of the villains pilled up staking against each other but somehow more keeping out of nowhere. Damn it, there's too many of them Momo gritted her teeth as she was almost exhausted. Gyro nodded in agreement, they just keep popping out of nowhere. Kaminari said how many volts can you electrify them? Momo asked him as he thought about it. 
Ohm, one million volts, I think he responded as Momo nodded her head while rubbing her chin in thought and thinking of plan, after a while a light bulb appeared on her head. Ah, I see so here's the plan I'll make a big thick electric proof cloth as you electrify them, but it will take longer because of how big it is, I need a distraction Momo said as they nodded and began to distract the villains as Momo created the cloth. Kaminari-san, it's done! Momo yelled as a big thick cloth appeared on her back as it covered her and Gyro. Right let's fry them up, Kaminari said with smirk on his face one million volts coming right up. He said as electricity came out of him and into the villains shocking them to unconsciousness before his brain got fried due to his quirk as he went into his jamming yay state as Gyro would soon dub it. Yay, he said at his thumbs swaying in midair. All right let's go Gyro-san. Momo mumbled. Wait, cover yourself first yeah Momo, Gyro said as she saw Momo's torn clothes. Ah, my clothes are torn apart, Momo said as she covered herself with the blanket. Wait Kaminari, whatever you do don't Lu Gyro was cut off as she saw Kaminari's state. Yay, he said eh he was looking around with his thumbs swaying in midair. Gyro tried to hold her laughed but failed as see watch him in his current state. As Momo finished creating herself some new clothes as she saw Gyro who was currently rolling in the ground while laughing maniacally as Denki was on his jamming yay state. Ooh, Momo's sweat dropped at the sight. Look at him ha 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 Gyro said struggling to breathe due to her laughter as she was weakly pointing at Kaminari. Yay yay, he said as he swayed his thumbs mid-air as Momo giggled. Maybe it's his drawback, Momo concluded as she chuckled. Indeed, but let's get going the others might need our help Momo sighed as Gyro nodded as she recomposed herself holding a dumb denki on her hands. Momo screamed in pain as a lightning bolt hit her catching her off guard as someone kicked Gyro away from her. She looked to see that they had missed one villain who was hiding patiently to attack them as he saw his opportunity when they were now exhausted and was now walking towards her. Finally, it took you brats some time to take out my comrades and tire yourself out, he said, as he picked up Gyro's sword in the ground, and now. Momo was backing up in the ground as her body was still recovering from the pain, the villain gave her as the villain was raising Gyro's sword in the air ready to strike her. Die, the villain yelled with a sadistic smirk on his face as he swung his sword down ready to cut her in half. Yeah, Momo. Gyro yelled as her eyes widened, knowing what was about to happen. Momo closed her eyes as she had tears on her eyes as she thought of the love of her life in her final moments. I'll finally be with you Izuku, she thought sadly as she would finally be reunited with her love. Momo waited for the blade to cut her in half but felt nothing she slowly opened her eyes. What she saw was the villain spitting out blood as a hand was through his chest where his heart was. His hands were shaking as he was still holding onto his sword as he finally dropped it, and as his body fell limp through the floor dead. Momo looked up to see who her savior was to see a man wearing a black cloak with red clouds on them. His right hand was soaked in blood. He had on an orange spiral mast with one eye hole on it. He had with messy black hair hidden behind his mast and black onyx eyes that she swore looked familiar to her for some reason. The man looked at her, his eyes showing that of worry as he sighed, almost in relief that she was safe and okay before shrugging it off oh oops. I thought you were one of the students my bad he said in as childish tone as he rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. Oh howdy there. Tobai said as he waved his hand at the still shocked students I'm Tobai and you are? With Aizawa. Aizawa was currently laying on the ground his goggles was on the ground broken as he was bleeding from his forehead with the Namu sitting on his back as he was groaning in pain. What do you think eraser head? Shigaraki said as his eyes widened in amusement he's the bioengineered anti-symbol of peace but you can call him Namu, he said, as the Namu roared, showing its sharp teeth, Aizawa yelled in pain, as the Namu broke his right arm with a sickening crunch. You can erase her people's quirks that's irritating, but, but it's nothing impressive when faced with true devastating power. You might as well a quirkless child, Shigaraki said, as he looked at Aizawa. Aizawa groaned in pain as the Namu held his left arm as he gritted his teeth. 
he's breaking my bone like twigs, I'm positive I erase his quirk, but that means he's super strong, even without powers I think he's as strong as All Might Aizawa thought as the Namu held up his head with its massive hands and slammed his head on the ground. The mist villain suddenly appeared next to Shigaraki did you manage to kill 13? Shigaraki asked as he looked at Kirajiri. The rescue hero is out of commission Kirajiri said, but there was one student that managed to escape my grasp and got outside of the facility. Kirajiri you fool if you weren't our warp gate I'd tear apart every last atom in your body Shigaraki said angrily as he began to scratch his neck profusely making it bleed before stopping there's no way we can win if dozens of pros show up to stop us it's game over back to the title screen and here I was looking forward to finally finish him off. Suddenly they heard a loud crash as the doors of the usch was blown completely out of his, its hinges as smoke started to emit from it, as suddenly a silhouette can be seen emerging from the smoke as All Might walk in with his teacher suit as the student began to smile and watch in awe as hope had finally arrived. Have no fear students, All Might said as his usual smile was now gone replaced by a frown for I am here. Mountain Zone Wow you three did an awesome job beating those villains up, you were like Pal and she was like Haya. Tobai said as he imitated their actions earlier making punching and kicking noises honestly, I was entertained the whole time you guys certainly hero course material. There was awkward silence as the two students and Denki who had just recovered from his idiot mode as they just stared at the man that had just saved Momo as it was interrupted when they heard a loud crash coming from the side of the mountain zone. Owa, you guys okay? Izumi asked as she got up and helped Maita and Zasui up off the ground. Luckily Maita managed to make us land safely Kiro Tsuyu said as she looked at the makeshift trampoline made out off Maita's quirk. Ayagi, Asui, Mainta, what are you doing here? Kaminari asked them confused to where they had come from. We were on the shipwreck zone and we got surrounded luckily we made it out by propelling ourselves out of the shipwreck zone and landed here Izumi explained what happened to them. Well now just my luck, imagine going toe to toe against not three but six UA students. In a hero course no less. Man what a bad luck Tobai said as he pouted in annoyance on the last part. Huh, who are you? Izumi asked him. Oh, where are my manners? I'm Tobai the lovable new member of the League of Villains Tobai, said his arms at the side of his waist. League of Villains, ha? Huh? Momo muttered as she narrowed her eyes at him. He doesn't look like an ordinary villain, Minta said. Relax, he probably just some thug like the rest of them, Kaminari said as he prepared his quirk. Don't underestimate him, that could cost us a mistake Momo said as she got off the ground and grunting as the pain hasn't fully left her body yet. Guys I think we should work together, we got a better chance of beating him that way Izumi said as Momo glared at her. Not a chance she said as she gritted her teeth. Yeah Momo, she's right we need to work together in order to beat this guy Gyro said as Momo nodded reluctantly. Fine, but just this once Yagi Momo said as she glared at her making Izumi nod. Try to subdue him, we can ask him some questions about their leader Momo instructed them as they nodded in understanding. I don't mean to break your plan, but that's kind of illogical yeah Momo, but we do have the advantage in numbers, so we should be fine Suyu said. Oh dear Tobai gasp, am I being underestimated by you guys? Momo smirked at him. Why are you smirking? Tobai asked her confused. Take this, you stupid villain Kaminari suddenly ran forward his fist in the air ready to punch him. Huh, a surprised attack? Oh no, Tobai said as he gasped in shock only for the attack to phase right through him. Just kidding, Tobai said as he stick his tongue at them behind his mask making raspberry noises. So that's his quirk, he can phase right through our attacks, Momo said as she analyzed the scene. Something like that he must have a weakness though Gyro said as she looked at him with her eyes activated. Gyro can you see who's behind that mask? Momo asked her as Gyro shook her head. I can't something preventing me too all I see is a blank face Gyro said as Momo nodded. Take this, Minata and Kaminari said as they attack him on both side hoping to catch him off guard. Wow, you guys must really think that you can take me down. 
I mean honestly what can two kids do to me Tobai said as he grabbed mine to mid-air and threw him onto Kaminari sending them both crashing. Okay so far what we know is that he can phase through an attack like nothing, but when multiple people attack him he goes on the offensive Tsuyu said. Which means that he can only be able to phase through one attack in a time Gyro concluded as Momo and the others nodded in understanding. My, my, I couldn't help but notice that you're talking a little too much time with each other. Wait, don't tell me Tobai said as he gasped putting a hand on his mouth. Are you guys really analyzing my powers for any weaknesses? Now you, you a student sure are cleaver, huh? But to tell you the truth, for just a common thug, I'm doing pretty good, don't you think? Tobai asked them. Damn it, he's just toying with us, Gyro said as she gritted her teeth. This guy's really underestimating us? Kaminari said as he glared at the man. Maybe he can only phases through attack one at a time, Momo said as she readied her bow staff. Attack him all at the same time, got it, Kaminari said as he readied his quirk. Just give up, villain, all of your allies have been defeated by kids, no less, Momo said it's no use fighting, you'll be outnumbered in a minute. Hum, a tempting offer, let me think, Tobai said, as he put his hand on his chin, since you had bring it up the fact that you beat my comrades, even though you are children, how about I tell you a little secret? I'm a kid too. They gasp in shock and no way why would a kid like you become a villain, Izumi asked. Uh, because they're cooler, hey, by the way, from you point of view, those this cloak make me look fat, Tobai said as he moved side to side, giving them a better angle. Enough we had enough of your silly jokes, everyone in attacking position Momo ordered as they nodded. Oh ho ho, getting serious now, are we? Tobai said well I'd better up my game too. Let's go go Kaminari, Tsuyu so guys ready? Gyro asked them. Yet yeah, Tsuyu said nodding her head. Ready when you are Kaminari said as he nodded towards her. I have an idea Izumi said as she looked at Momo Yayurazu sen throw me, she said as she held up her and for Momo to take it. Gladly Momo muttered as she grabbed Izumi's hand and spun her around before throwing her at the air. Wow she went really high look at her go Tobai said as he watched Momo threw Izumi into the air as the others were heading toward him. You better pay attention Kaminari said as he tried to punch Tobai only for him to dodge. Woo oh dear? Tobai said as he narrowly dodged Denki's punch. You better watch out Kiro Tsuyu said as she extended her tongue towards him. Hey no fair Tobai said as he dodged a tongue that came from Tsuyu. Pay attention. Gyro said as she swing her sword toward Tobai who dodged her attack in the nick of time. Alay, Tobai said as he moved to the right, the sword narrowly missing his head three against one you hero cowards. New Hampshire smash Izumi yelled as her fist connected with Tobai. Ah, you got me. Tobai yelled as a cloud of smoke was created due to her attack. Did we get him? Tsuyu asked her. Way the go Yagi Kaminari said cheering her on. Where did he go? Gyro asked looking around. Izumi look around at the crater she created as she felt someone behind her. Buo! Tobai said as he emerged on the ground as Izumi turned around to punch him only for it to phase right through him. What the hell, Kaminari said in shock before gaining a confused look wait is he flossing? Kaminari asked clearly confused. The other looked towards Tobai who was flossing while muttering can't touch this making them even more agitated. He's just messing with us. Gyro gritted her teeth together in anger. That's it, he's getting it now. Kaminari said in both annoyance and anger. Minta did you set the traps Momo asked him. Yet they're ready Minta said as Momo nodded. Suddenly a man with a Venus flytrap over his head appeared as he was wearing the same black cloak with red clouds with a Venus flytrap as he emerged to he wall right next to Tobai. All Might has arrived, and he is currently fighting off the villains, the creature said in a monotone voice as it opened up its Venus flytrap revealing green hair, half black and half white face with yellow eyes. Tobai gasped in shock what I don't believe it. Kidding Tobai said as his voice suddenly changes into a deep one replacing his childish voice earlier, it's just as I expected. They gasped in shock as he was just toying with them from the beginning. Now let's get serious, shall we? Tobai said as a swirling vortex appeared next to him. 
Tobai put his hand in the vortex and pulled it back out as he was now holding a black metal rod as he spun the rod in his fingers before blurring away from them. Tobai suddenly rushed towards Izumi, as Izumi gasped in shock as she felt the black rod he was holding ripped through her stomach impaling her. So, this was the end of part 2 of this series. Stay tuned for next part of this series, and if you like this video don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.